So welcome back, everyone. Um, we are one minute late on account of a very short break. But um, next up, we have our three year research talks for today. I am going to uh, present these talks as pre recorded videos, and then there will be time again for questions, questions and answers to the speakers. First up, we have Xi Wu from the University of Sydney with a joint work um, with the University of uh, Athens on explaining bug provenance and trace witnesses. Hello, everyone. I am Xi Wu from the University of Sydney. Today, I'm going to present our paper explaining bug provenance with trace witnesses. This is a joint work together with Ji Xiang and Bernard from the University of Sydney, Neville and Yanis from the University of Athens. So, as we know, bug finding tools have matured, so they are widely used in the software development life cycle, both in academia as well as industry. These tools search for software bugs by checking programs code using static program analysis techniques without executing the code. They not only improve the productivity of software engineers, but also lower the maintenance costs. Now, let's see a motivating example. This is a part of a Java program, which actually contains a non-point exception. If we look at this code in more details, we can see there are two classes, man and NPE. The NPE class only contains one method named return none. This method takes a string as a parameter. If this parameter equals to none, then the whole method returns none. The man class contains two methods, man method and also another private method named NPE call. This private method invokes both the return none method of NPE class and also the two string method. So if we put this example into a back finding tool, it may return you the following result as I showed in my slides. It tells you that there might be a bug on line 11 in the man.java file where I draw a right line in the example. At the first moment you got this information, as a software engineer, it may not be immediately intuitive to you to understand the true existence of this reported bug. So we have to look at this code again very carefully. I draw some arrows here so that we can easily find out that when the main message invokes the NPE call method. It passes none as the second parameter, which will continue passing to the method return none. So the variable result, the variable result on line 11 equals to none. Then this none invokes to string causes this none point exception error. So here we find that if we can understand the connection between the root cause of a bug and the reported line number, then we can better understand the true existence of a reported bug easily. So the motivating example I used here actually is a very simple example, which contains only a few lines of code. Now, let's assume we are dealing with a very complicated example, as I listed one on my slides. It makes the understanding of the reported bugs more complicated if we only know the file names as well as the line number of the reported, as reported here. So when we use the state-of-the-art bug-finding tools, we may have the following deep thinking questions. Why bugs were found? Could I also see the root cause together with the reported bug line number? May I also have a comprehensive explanation for these existence reported bugs? 
Well, most of the art bug finding tools do not explain why bugs were found. Mainly due to coarse grained obstruction, that they abstract away large portions of the operational semantics of the programming languages. Some bug finding tools provide vague notions of provenance, such as reporting par partial uh, paths and heuristics to expose the root cause of the bugs, where most of the techniques are ad hoc. Since the program, uh, since the problem is really hard and undecidable, if definite explanations are sought after. Well, in order to improve the utility of the bug finding tools, our work devises a new technique, giving insight into finding the casual connection between the root cause of a bug and the reported line number to the end users. We will map an input language into a simple, decidable machine called Constant Copy Machine, the CCM, for provenance uh, constructions. And also, we will use an abstracted flow-based semantics to overcome the problem undecidability and also to solve the bug provenance in polynomial time. Well, in order to achieve this goal, our work proposed a new computational model, constant copy machine, as I mentioned, which is also called CCM. And we also introduced the concept of trace witness to assemble the provenance of a reported bug. And then, based on the Florida Walshaw algorithm, we develop, we develop a new trace witness generator and also evaluate our approach on some open source Java programs. First of all, let's have a quick look at our new computational model, constant copy machine. This is a simplified intra-procedure machine. Elect, uh, elementary instructions in a CCM abstract a behavior of a language with set effects such as C and also mimic the control flow of input programs while a control flow graph. The CCM is only for analysis purpose and not as an actual execution semantics. So a program in CCM is represented as a control flow graph. And here, V is the set of the program statements and E is the set of control flow ages. R is the start node of the program, and F is the final node, which is usually an assertion. So I will introduce the assertion later on this page. A program path is a finite sequence of statements. Now, let's go back to the syntax of our CCM. Here we can see a statement in a control flow graph can either be a constant assignment, or a, co a copy assignment, or an assertion, as I mentioned just now, which is used to check whether the variable x has a certain value n in a node or not. And also, a statement can also be a no operation, operation semantics. So after we have seen the CCM model, we would like to explain what does a trace witness mean in our work. In fact, a trace witness is a, pro a program path which starts from the start node with initial statement and terminates in the final node, which contains an assertion there. We provide a strong update semantics for our CCM, which det whose details can be found in our paper. I didn't list it, the very detailed semantics here in my slides. But here, I listed a semantics function, sigma, for program passes, whose intuitive meaning is that the evaluation of a program pass P is the semantics evaluation of each uh, s statement on the pass according to 
the context context C. Now we can see the truth witness pro problems in our work is in fact asks for a truth witness, particular a shortest path, a shortest one for which the assertion A in the final node F holds under the program context C in the node. Besides that, we have also developed an, we have we have also developed a new trace witness generator. And here I listed the overall framework for our trace witness generator. So in order to understand the trace witness problem on, um, for example, object-oriented languages, we use a translation approach, which we call it a gadget to translate the input language or input program into our CCM. This generator, uh, sorry, this uh, gadget is composed of two paths. First is the dupe framework, and the second part is our own CCM gadget part, which means our CCM gadget will take the result from dupe framework for the input language. Then, the main responsibility for our CCM gadget mainly focus on converting programs with their, with their inter-procedure calls into the intra-procedure cases. As we mentioned just now that the CCM is a simplified intra-procedure machine only. Also, the gadget will map CCM trace witnesses back to the original input programs. So on this page, you can see this control flow graph in CCM for our motivating example, the, NP, uh, the NPE uh, motivating example, as I showed uh, before. So here we can see two red, bo two red boxes that which are added into the control flow graph for, by our gadget so that the in, inter-procedure calls in the input language can be converted into the intra-procedure calls so that can the whole process so that the whole language can be represented in CCM. Therefore, converting the input programs into CFG in CCM is the first step for our trace witness generator. Besides that, we also have another two steps for our trace witness generators. So the first one is, the, is what we call it the data dependency train computation. The second, the third one is the shortest trace generation. So during the Data dependency train computation, we would like to compute all the variables in the program which may contribute to the assertion, and also record the nodes which contains these variables. Then, the shortest distance between every two data dependent nodes in the data dependent train will be calculated based on the following based on the Folaida washout algorithm, as I mentioned just now. As we know, Folaida washout algorithm is a very efficient algorithm to find the shortest path among all pairs of nodes, which leverages the principle of dynamic programming to achieve its simplicity and efficiency. Even though it has the uh, cubic time complexity, it allows the result to be queried multiple times without any recomputation, which may occur, which may happen quite frequently during program analysis. So, based on the result we get from these three steps, we finally generate the trace witness that starts from the initial statement and terminates at the assertion node which makes the assertion holes. Well, we finally apply our approach on three open source Java programs whose size can be found here through this table. The goal of our case study here 
is to find valid traces of NPEs reported by a Java non-point exception checker named Digger, which was developed by P Programming Language Group in the University of Sydney. So from the result table here on the slides, we can see that around 80% NPE reported by Digger can, cannot find a trace witness, which illustrates that this NPE may be a false positive. But we cannot conclude that these bugs without the trace witness, witness are definitely a false positive. That is because some of these invalidations are caused by node unreachability. Besides that, our result also illustrates the efficiency of our algorithms, which solve the bug provenance for, compli uh, for complicated programs in polynomial time. But except that, our result also bring us a deep thinking that maybe a better soft, uh, sorted, uh, sortist path algorithm need to be studied so that our approach can reach a better uh, performance. Finally, I, I would like to conclude our uh, paper that in our work, we propose a trace fitness based back provenance techniques. And we also introduce a new computational model, CCM, for the provenance construction. Besides that, we also develop a new trace generator based on the Floyd Warshall algorithms. However, this is only the first step for our work. And in the future, we still need to enrich the CCM, for example, by adding computational statements. And as I mentioned just now, we would like to investigate other shortest pass algorithms, for example, Dextra algorithms. The least but not the, the last but not the least is we would like to apply our approach to other kinds of exceptions. So that's all for our, uh, for my presentation. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you very much. Um, now, let me see. Yes. Hello, Xi. We have you on video now. So everyone, yes. uh, now is your chance to ask questions about Xi's talk. We have uh, a good amount of time. We are doing very good on time overall, I would say. So please use the opportunity. So um, I'm not seeing any questions yet. So uh, maybe a one so first So probably question. I first share my slides in case some audience would like to refer to my slides. That's a very good idea, yes. Um, let's see, until we have questions, maybe I can ask one. Um, so you've applied this now to uh, null pointer exceptions. Um, yes. What, uh, do you expect um, different kinds of challenges with uh, different kinds of bugs? Or do you have particular bugs in mind that uh, whose challenges yeah. you thought about? Okay, that's a very good question. So actually, as I mentioned just now, uh, this project actually can be divided into several steps. And this steps, this work is really our first steps, a step. And in this work, we only focus on the NPE. But I think we also would like to extend our approach so that we can convert, we, so, so that we can be applied to other uh, uh, exceptions. And currently, uh, yeah, we are still in the, so as I mentioned in my future work, we have several steps and we are currently focusing more on enriching the CCM itself and also investigate for the other shortest path algorithms. So for the, actually for the last point, I think it's still in our to-do list, but mm, it's not a very, you know, clear yeah, plan for the, the other kind of exceptions, but I'm pretty sure that our work can cover more types of exceptions. Thank you. Uh, we have a Thank first you. question from the forum, which is from uh, Alan Cox, who asks, how does the translation to CCM work for interprocedural calls for, of, for example, recursive calls? Ah, okay. So currently in our CCM, it doesn't contain the recursive, but uh, 
we if we we uh, I mean in my talk I think especially for the gadget uh, gadget one that we use we currently focus more on the gadget to do the translation between the input language into the CCM. And I think that's a really a good suggestion that we may consider the recursive later in the extensions of this work. But currently this gadget will help us to translate the inter procedure into the intro one. And that is what we can cover currently. Thank you. Um, the next question comes from Paddy Krishna and Oracle Labs. Many data okay. flow analyses keep track of trace. So is your technique specific to the use of data log? Uh, no, not particular to the data. Uh, yes and no. So yes, currently this work is based on the data log, but I think maybe it is not only specific to the data log, we can actually extend it to other, other ones, not only the data log. So what specifically is it there that data log gives you that you would have to uh, replicate elsewhere? Might be a follow up. Yeah, so, okay, I think it should go back to the gadget we used. So actually, as I mentioned, this gadget can be divided into two paths. The first patch actually we used, we need some help from the dupe framework. And as you know, dupe can help us to actually translate the input language into the facts, which can be directly used in the data log. So currently, because I think uh, the dupe framework is very useful currently for our work. So that's the reason why we focus on the data log currently. Thank you. Um, are there any further questions? There's another question posted uh, on a different thread, I see. Uh, the advertising the question thread, there is a question. Does this is, need something? That is not the thread for, for questions, but uh, I will, I will uh, use this one once and then maybe I should delete that thread to avoid confusion. Um, does this technique need some constraint solving to check the feasibility of witness traces? I see, I have not seen some discussion of this from Ting Su. Uh, yes, actually, it needs to do some pre-processing, especially for the unfeasible conditions. Uh, sorry, I'm not quite sure whether that is the... I may answer the, the question, I believe. Ting asks that whether we need to do some pre-processing for the unfeasible nodes. It was specifically for using constraint solving to check the feasibility of... Uh, ah, the constraint solving, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, sure. So it still uh, goes back to our future work that yes, I think we will use, currently we plan to use the mm, solar like the Z3 for our future work so that we can cover more features in this framework. That may be Thank not you. particular to the constraint solving. Yeah. Uh, There are, there are opportunities to ask follow-up questions, but I have one more question now from Mario Luca Bernardi. In the mm -hmm. CCM translation, how do you deal with polymorphic calls? Uh, okay, so um, currently we didn't cover that part, unfortunately, yeah. But yes, so since I mentioned that we have the several steps and we plan to cover it in the extended work, so. Yeah, I believe, uh, sure, because I mentioned again that this is the first step. And also the main goal for this first step is that we want to, by using CCM to vacant the semantics so that we can easily solve the, uh, so, so that we can easily solve the, the problem in the, polynomial, uh, in the polynomial time. So that is our main focus on this first step. I see. Thank you very much. Uh, I think we're out of time Thank for you. questions, but I very much appreciate your talk. Thank you so much again, um, and also Thank for you so your much. answers to the questions. Now okay. it is time for us to move on.